Hey everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd Likes to Film Stuff and look what arrived on my doorstep today. This is the LG V20 alongside the H3 by b and Play earbuds. I'm actually excited to have a nice pair of earbuds. I don't have a nice pair. So I have to thank LG for sending this unit out for me to look at. This is a press unit provided courtesy of LG. Of course, all thoughts and opinions are always my own. How else could I get this so quickly? Let's get right in to open the box before I start running my commentary. So this kind of opens up like a book, it looks like. Here we have the unit, and then this opens up a little bit. You can see that this is for the battery. You've got the charger and the charging cable. So let's go ahead and take the phone out itself and start peeling away all the packaging. That's my favorite part. Let's grab our battery out of here too. That looks like a nice size battery. I believe it's 3,200 milliamp hours. Indeed, 3,200 milliamp hours. And that seems to be all that there is in the packaging here. I think that's cute, very clean overall. Ah, oh, yeah. These static clingy things. Now this is going to take a bit more patience. There's a lot of plastic here protecting these top and bottom bumpers. Oh, this is nice. They actually have a screen protector that has come pre-installed underneath that top plastic. There we go. I'm gonna try to tidy up a little bit here. Alongside the V20, I have the V10 from last year, and I have to say that I loved the V10. There was just something about it. It rated in my top phones of the year. I made a top phones video. Some people really didn't like this kind of eclectic design, but I took it in stride because I knew it was really durable. But the V20 does get the same durability rating, so you don't have to worry about that being taken away. There is no more rubber feeling to this phone and it, we don't have those steel rails anymore. But what we do have at the top and the bottom are these silicone polycarbonate bumpers. We've got this removable back cover that is aluminum. I feel like they did something that really delighted me here. So in my recap video where I was talking about what my favorite phone would be, it was essentially the V20, kind of my own version of the V20, but I really wanted a removable aluminum back cover. And it looks like they did that. I'm sure this has nothing to do with me, but this actually tickled me a little bit to see, hey, yeah, we actually do have that removable aluminum cover coming closer to what I would have wanted last year. So we can just go about slipping the battery in. For those of you who really want to still have a removable battery for the Road Warrior in you, this phone might be for you. You've got access to SD card and also your SIM card tray right here. And then when all is said and done, you can simply just pop this back on. And there you go. It does add a bit of heft to it with that battery. And immediately in hand, I do like how it feels. Actually, the look of it kind of reminds me of the Nexus 6P a little bit. There's another phone that this reminds me of in appearance, and I can't quite think of it right now. If anyone knows, put a comment in the comment section below. You can see that we've got this interesting curved design here where these bumpers are. Looking around the phone, you can see we've got our volume buttons, nice and clicky. Right side is empty. I was like, wait, where's the power button? Oh yeah, it's, it's on the back. This is your fingerprint sensor and also your power button. You've got a dual LED flash here on the back. You've got a wide angle camera, a high resolution camera, optical image stabilization, laser autofocus. This is supposed to be the whole package with this camera. I'm excited to test it out. On the bottom, we have a speaker, you have the USB-C charging port microphone, and also a headphone adapter. A big thing about this phone is this is very much a audiophile phone. We've got that 32-bit Hi-Fi Quad DAC in this thing. So if you are an audiophile, this is definitely the phone to go for. We don't have any water resistancy with this phone, but it is quite a durable phone. So that's something you're going to have to take into consideration when you're deciding which phone to buy. This is essentially a very multimedia based phone. If you're someone who loves to take pictures, if you're someone who loves to listen to audio, you've got this large display here, this might be for you. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Let's talk about some specs as well. So this is a Snapdragon 820 device. It's at the top with the other devices out there, other flagships being released, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and the SD card slot that I showed you earlier. And a big selling point, of course, is that this has Nougat out of the box. 
You can call this the first third-party OEM phone that has Nougat on it. It says, welcome. Of course, in my review, I will test out the quality of this display, see how it's been calibrated. It looks to be a little bit on the cool side. That's what I can tell immediately. Although the same thing was happening with the V10, so I really don't expect too much difference. We'll see if it's still got that wide color gamut and all. Even though I'm not a huge fan of wide color gamuts without color management options, I do like that LG's displays have really nice contrast ratio, really nice inky blacks. The secondary display of the LG V10 has made a comeback. That was right here. I hear that it has more contrast now, brighter. If you look at the front of these two, you can see that now we only have one camera, where this had two. One was just the selfie camera and then the wide-angle selfie camera, where this one is now an all-encompassing wide selfie camera. Ah, one thing I almost missed at the top here is that we still have the infrared blaster. That's going to make a lot of people really happy. I know this has been long gone on Samsung devices, so there it is. It has made a comeback, if you are curious. And then there's the microphone there. Reminiscent of the V10 before, but a very different look and style. I think that it's very subdued and very clean, and I like that, actually. So I'm going to take some time to set it up, and then I want to give a bit of a first impressions. Before I even take a chance to play with it, I can already say that the way that this metal wraps around feels really nice in the hand. It has a good continuity to it. I would never know that this was supposed to pop off. Yes, obviously I can tell that there are some seams here, but it all matters about how it feels when you hold it. This does not feel like a cheap phone. It doesn't feel like a hollow phone, and I'm certainly not detecting large layers of paint. That is hard metal through and through. So now I'd like to take a second to thank my sponsors at Braintree so much for making content creation possible. What do Uber, Airbnb, and GitHub have in common? Easy mobile payments, thanks to Braintree. Braintree is a major reason you can press one button and pay for something. They're a PayPal company that makes mobile payments so easy, fast, and seamless that your business will be up and running in no time. Add a few lines of code to your app and you're ready to accept Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, even Bitcoin. They offer a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. And if new ways to pay come along, Braintree will support those too. Braintree's best-in-class mobile checkout experience means fewer abandoned carts and more sales. So you'll always be ready whether you're earning your first dollar or your billionth. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash Erica. Okay, so now I have played with it for a little bit. I've set it all up, got it right to my liking. And my first impression is, congratulations, LG. I think this is something that you really needed. The G5 was really, <laughs> the G5 was interesting. And I think that this phone definitely makes up for it. It's a really good quality phone. There's no feeling of cheap here at all. Feels really nice and sturdy in hand. This mechanism here doesn't concern me at all. Everything seems to be of nice and premium quality. One thing I do notice right here is that this is plastic. This is probably just a little bit of a defect right here. But this lens cover thing is plastic and I'm afraid that this is going to scratch over time. But the actual lens coverings themselves seem to be glass. I can see some smudges along this darker color, but I think that they're not as apparent. So this is probably the color that I would go for. I am really liking the secondary display. It does indeed seem brighter to me. I believe that the characters are bigger as well. So how about light leading with this little display? I noticed that with the V10 that we did have light leading in the dark. I'm happy to see that this is not a problem. It looks like once you go into the dark, the brightness adjusts properly for that environment. And then I don't see any light bleeding. Maybe for just a moment, I see a little hot spot right about here, but then it adjusts to the darkness and it gets really dim itself and there is no bleeding, nothing that I've seen. So I'm happy to see that improvement. It seems nice and responsive. Pretty happy with it. Against all white, mine seems to have a little bit of a shadow here. I'm not sure if that has to do with how the LEDs are implemented, but it's not incredibly bothersome, so I think they've done a pretty good job with this secondary display overall. As for what I'm noticing with the calibration of the display so far, just making snap judgment with just a couple of very simple tools. Yes, this is a very saturated display. It looks like it's still that very much wide gamut, what they are calling the DCI-P3 gamut. So you can expect colors to be oversaturated in the greens, especially in the reds. 
It would be nice if LG, like other OEMs, would include a mode that would allow you to choose the color profile, whether you wanted it to be sRGB or the oversaturated mode, but I don't see that anywhere. So keep in mind that most things are going to look oversaturated, but it is a nice looking display. I'm particularly happy that my whites don't look greenish. They are definitely on the cool side, but it's not horribly greenish. That's what really bothers me when I have a cool display. A lot of the time it's kind of greenish accompanying with that cool tone, but I actually like it. Not bad. I really wonder if there's going to be variations. Something a bit unfortunate on mine is you can see this kind of reddish pinkish band right here in the grayscale. So when I'm looking at skies that are in that gray tone, they look kind of pinkish. It's a little bit weird. That might just be a manufacturing issue with mine. I've seen so many variations in display calibration, but still it's a really nice display. Nice inky blacks, great contrast ratio. I've been taking a look at the interface. It's really nice and toned down, very flat looking. And one of the things that I noticed, of course, is that out of the box, there's no app tray but they make that simple for you. Actually, right out of the box, I had a couple options to change this. I have home and app drawer. That was on there, it came on there. If not, you can probably download it from LG's store. So if I choose home here, you can see that this is like iPhone, just a continuous array of apps. But don't dismay, you have many options. These are actually installed for myself. Let's go ahead and put it back to what I like best. I also notice that the phone feels nice and snappy. It's not a laggy type phone. I do appreciate that those animations feel nice and smooth enough so far for me. I don't have any complaints about performance just yet. And neither have I noticed it getting really hot yet either. So that's good, especially because I have been charging it and putting all my stuff on it. And I haven't noticed it getting to be really hot, so I value that. So this is NuGet, and because it's NuGet, we have some nice features on here, such as double tap. You can see it lets you switch between your last apps, your two last apps. Then if you hold down on it, it's going to bring up your multi-window function built right into NuGet. Not all applications are supported, of course. Right here from the dropdown, you got several options. One that stood out to me is that you can choose to turn on and off the Hi-Fi Quad DAC at will, so that's great. You can see that I have my little Easter egg guy pulled up here. Been waiting for a cat to come. Of course, one of the most exciting things to me is this camera application. I like my little shortcut when it's off. Push down twice and you've activated the camera. So of course you've got your automatic mode. You can switch between the wide angle and also the high resolution camera. Manual camera gives you a lot of different controls down here at the bottom, just like we've loved before. And then of course, still with manual mode for video, you've got lots of awesome features too. You can switch between both the cameras. You can mess around with white balance focus, exposure compensation, ISO, your shutter speed, exposure lock. You can mess around with the audio quality so you've got your gain control, low cut filter, and also your limiter, your microphone balance, whether in front or behind you. You can turn your hi-fi recording on or off. Of course, you can choose your frame rate. I love that you can choose the bit rate for video. I always keep it on high. Very, very handy, full set of features, love this. Not to forget the easy ability to switch to the wide angle selfie camera, hello. So it's all still there in all its glory. I have also been fascinated by their HD audio recorder. They claim the HD audio recorder represents the next level of sound recording. This feature lets users capture studio quality audio with a wider dynamic frequency range using three high AOP microphones to record incredible sound that surpass audio recordings on conventional smartphones. They're saying these can be used to create high quality audio suitable for auditions by recording singing voices over existing music. That's interesting. It makes me wonder how well this can handle high frequency noises, for instance, because I'm a soprano. So underneath the custom setting, you can see that you can add music in the background to sing to. So you can make yourself a little demo tape. Will this actually hold up? I, this is something I'd have to test out and play around with myself, but that's cool. So high quality video, high quality audio that you can record, and also having great high fidelity audio output from this thing as well because of the DAC. 
So I'm going to be very curious to play around with this, see how I feel. So far, I'm liking it. Do I like it more than something like the Galaxy Note 7? I think that they're meant for completely different audiences. This feels very niche, where the Note 7 feels like they're trying to swoosh it into mainstream. So I'll take some time to play around with this. I will make a full review most definitely. And what I want from you guys is please ask me all the questions that you can possibly think of so that I can review this device. I love your questions. I look at them all the time. They really help me to formulate my review and to understand what people are most curious about. So please, please don't be shy. Ask all the questions that you could possibly think of for this phone. This has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Hang tight for the full review and have a good night.